following is a presentation of Play Fly Sports Properties. Man, I get my head, my guys, and trying to turn to the goal line. Put the football. He's got him. He's got him. He's got Bad snap. Ball. Oh. Scoop up. Here come the Spartans. Down the sideline. He hits it! He hits it! He hits it! This is Sparta! Man, I'm just really impressed with when you turn on the tape and you see how they play the game of football. Yep, I love it. Comments from head coach Mel Tucker from Michigan State Football Spartans. This is Sparta. I'm your host, Jason Strayhorn, along with my co-host, J.U. Choo Choo Culcrick. How you doing, J.U.? I am good. It's game week. It's We're here. Big Ten opener, baby. Let's get ready to rock. Minnesota Golden Gophers come to town as we turn the page from a week ago's loss out west to the Washington Huskies. We look forward now to the Golden Gophers, and Golden Gophers coming in 3-0. and oh. P.J. Fleck, we know how inspirational he is and how he's got his team rolling right now, especially on that ground game. Yeah, uh, Coach Fleck is a great motivator. Uh, you saw, you know, the people around the area here listening to this, you know, they saw what he did with the Western Michigan Broncos, and then he took his talents uh, to Minnesota with the Gophers, and you know, they're going to come in, they're going to come in ready to play. You know, um, they, they'll be on top of the world. They're 3-0 and with big, like, big wins, dominant wins, uh, but it's the Big Ten opener. You know, they think the Spartans will still be licking their wounds a little bit, uh, but they're coming into a hostile environment here at Spartan Stadium at the Woodshed, so it'll be exciting. So important for Michigan State to be able to make those corrections that uh, happened a week ago, turn the page, and have a short memory. As you talk about having a memory like a goldfish. Right? Yeah, definitely. And that, that is something that is very important for them to do. And I think they will. I think they that's behind them. It's Big Ten play now. It's almost a reset of the season. Yeah, definitely another reset of the season for Michigan State as Big Ten play now opens up. And these all count, even though it's against a Western opponent. But it's Big Ten play now, and this is for all the marbles. Let's go into the MSU game day stat breakdown presented to you by IHOP. The two-by-two-by-two two by two breakfast combo equals one delicious meal. Enjoy two pancakes, two eggs your way, and two pieces of bacon for only $5, only at IHOP. Hurry in and enjoy this deal for a limited time. Dine-in only. Price and participation may vary. Restrictions do apply. And for the statistics, for a week ago with the Golden Gophers, they faced a Colorado team that they played a year ago and they won. But this time, it seemed a little bit more of a dominant performance, winning 49-7 to at home, amassing 500 total yards of offense. 334 of those on the ground, Jay. Yeah, uh, it was just a dominating win, um, a win that... You know, if you're a better team, that's what you're supposed to do, and that's how you're supposed to do it. So it's definitely a confidence booster for Minnesota. And the thing that really struck me is the yardage that they gained on the ground. Uh, their identity is run the football. Minnesota's identity has always been run the football. When you go all the way back to Lawrence Maroney, uh, Marion Barber, those type of, of, of guys, that's the identity of Minnesota golden goal for football is pounding the rock and run to win. So they're going to come in here into Spartan Stadium this Saturday with that mindset of running the football. It's what we can do defensively. and What can we scheme up to make them throw the ball and be one-dimensional? Yeah, a year ago, Golden Gophers ran for 277 yards on the Colorado Buffaloes, averaging 5.2 a carry. This year's same team, they go 334 with a 6.4 average. Graduating four offensive linemen off of this line a year ago, this line seems to be better than 
as advertised and then from even a year ago, Mel Tucker saying this is the strength of the program for Minnesota. Yeah, it definitely is the strength of the program. Um, you know, just like every, just like uh, we say with our team, you're only going to go as far as the offensive line is going to take you. And uh, this Minnesota's offensive line, they relish the fact that they're the strength of the program. They're the strength of the of the offense. So you're going to see them coming in with a sense of pride, sense of uh, confidence that they can uh, impose their will on opposing defenses. When you have a great rushing attack, it makes for a great – passing attack, but your third down efficiency, when you look at what they did a week ago against the Colorado Buffaloes, Buffaloes only one of 12 on third down conversions. Golden Gophers, 13 of 15. A lot of those coming in short yardage, third and short situations, being able to just punch it through. Yeah, you know, when you when you have a stat like, you know, 13 or 15, you know that you're playing a clean game offensively. You're putting yourself in manageable situations. You're never behind the chains. Um, and it's a lot easier to call for an offensive, uh, uh, offensive coordinator when you're in. It's a lot easier to call third and two, third and three, as opposed to third and 12, third and 15. Um, but my question for you, Jason, is, you know, we talk about the strength of being the offensive line. And they can in over 300 yards on the ground. What's the mindset of an offensive lineman when you're just mashing your opponents and your running backs having success? You know, that's what all offensive linemen want to do anyway is run the ball. They'd much rather run block than pass block, if you be quite honest about it. And when you're having success in doing that, you just, you're looking at the sideline, you're pointing to the press box of your offensive coordinator, and you're asking them to keep feeding the guys, keep running it. Keep running the ball because you are demoralizing that front seven, front six, front seven, front eight, whatever they're putting in the box in front of you, you're demoralizing them because that's the last thing a defense wants is to continually get smashed, be on the ground, knockdowns, pancakes, cut, all those things that offensive linemen can do with having their toolbox and while you're gaining 6.4 yards per carry. Uh, that means you're, you're, you're dominating the ball game, you know, so I think that they have this going. They have a mojo going right now over in Minneapolis, and they're going to try to bring that on the road and see if that travels. Because Michigan State defensively has been okay against the run. That's one thing that I think is a positive for Michigan State is that the matchups will be more strength on strength because you're going to bring a running attack into a team that's pretty good against the run. Michigan State obviously has issues in pass game, so we'll see. I don't, I don't expect – for P.J. Fleck to change his stripes and say, let's, let's go into an air raid attack right now. But they will test Michigan State secondary. Don't, don't, make, don't, don't make any mistakes about that. They will test the secondary, but they are going to come in with their bread and butter, and that's running that ball downhill and trying to demoralize Michigan State's front six, front seven, front eight in that box. Yeah, you have to do what what got you to the dance. Uh, you know, if running the football is what got you to the dance, you have to stick with that. But, you know, with that said, I'm looking forward to this matchup, the, the offensive line versus Michigan State's defensive line, for, you know, to see what we can do schematically, you know, to stop that run, to frustrate Minnesota into throwing the ball. Uh, but like you said, I, you know, don't, you know, Michigan um, – Minnesota will, you know, test us in the air a few times just to make sure, hey, you know, are they do they have their confidence or not? Yeah, that's that's one thing that will definitely be tested and as long as the resume as coach Tucker said is on film right now. The Michigan State secondary is a huge question mark for everyone around the country and they'd be amiss to not try to throw the ball up for grabs every now and then although Minnesota does lose their number one receiver, Chris Altman Bell, for the season with a knee injury in the the win over the Colorado Buffaloes. Yeah, it's unfortunate when anybody goes down, especially for a season ended injury. You know, it's a definitely a punch in the gut to those guys, their fan base, similar to what it was for us when when uh, Snow went out and X went out as well, um, and last week when we played without Reed and Slade. So. Football, you know, the injuries come along with it. You know, you know that going into it, but it's unfortunate when it's a season-ending injury and uh, may possibly affect your career down the road. Um, but, you know, you know, funny that we were talking about, you know, running the ball. I wouldn't be surprised if they came out and just, you know, 
went all verticals first play of the game just to see what's <laughs> happening, <laughs> you know, just to test that same thing. To see, to see if they practice all week, Yeah, huh? exactly. Just to make sure, just to keep them yep. honest. I, would, I think that would be fun. You know, you know, the punter for, for Minnesota – was pretty tight. Was was restless on the sideline. Only had one punt a week ago. That was, we talked about it. Thirteen to fifteen in third down conversions. Special teams. Is that going to come into play here? I know a week ago we talked about what the predictions were. What are your predictions for this tank game going forward here for Minnesota and Michigan State? In the Big Ten yeah, it's definitely going to – special teams will play a big part in it because Big Ten games now, you know your opponents. It's Big Ten football versus Big Ten football. You know, there's not much, you know, for, like last week it was Pac-12. They have a more finesse conference, and Big Ten's are more power. This is power on power. It's going to be not as high scored. It's not going to be a, a sexy game like people – you know, want to see sometimes. That's why I think special teams is going to be huge on this. And if it comes to special teams, I think the Spartans have the advantage in the special teams department. You know, this may be one of those games where the Spartans are in one of those bend but don't break situations. It may look bad at times in between the 20s. I think that Golden Gophers, they pride themselves on winning the time of possession battle. Last week, 36 minutes, 7 seconds to the goal, to the Colorado Buffaloes, 23 minutes. The Michigan State's fine with that because of the weapons they have on the outside, being able to get vertical with players like Keon Coleman, Trey Mosley, Daniel Barker as a tight end, and hopefully the emergence or the return of Jaden Reed. Yeah, um, definitely we're okay playing that bend but don't break defense, and we've done that. We did it, you know, a couple times, you know, against uh, Washington last week with those two goal line stances. Uh, But with that comes, you know, defense is tired. Now your offense has to go out there and do some type of, uh, some type of, uh, sustain it on, on offense. They have to get a drive going. It can't be, three and out or yeah we want to see the quick one-time shot and you know a big touchdown but your defense you got to keep in mind now your defense has to go back out there tired yes you definitely want to make sure you monitor the conditioning of the defense whether or not going to be as big of an issue going forward in big 10 play especially in the midwest now as the temperature starts to turn and drop a bit for on, uh, on on the, the big 10 season but when you look at what Michigan State's going to have to do, it's that turnover battle. Michigan State right now has zero interceptions on the season. Lots of fumble-causing plays and fumble recoveries, but no interceptions. This is a game where they get off of that snide and come up with an interception finally? Uh, you hope so. And if, if the interceptions are coming in, you know that Minnesota's deviated from their plan of running the football a little bit and they're going to the air. So hopefully, you know, that's a good sign, you know, if they're, if they try going that way. And, uh, but I think, you know, it'll come, the interceptions will come. You just have to be patient with it. The, uh, DBs have to just play their techniques. And the biggest thing is just stay the course. I think one of the things that is the key to victory for Michigan State is being able to play fast and attack a type of ball, football, especially from the offensive side of the ball. I think we have to come out if there's a if you win the toss, take the ball, try to score. Don't defer and let them go down the field and, and, and inject their dominance dominance on the team on the game itself. You need to go out, attack and score and score quickly and put them in a position where they get to be one dimensional and have to do something that they don't like to do, which is throw the ball around. You want to put them in a panic position on the road in a tough environment with that deep end, cheering loud, the band playing, the music going, all those things. That's what you need to do if you're Michigan State against a team that can control the ball and move it, move those chains like Minnesota can. You want to keep them off of the field, and then when they are on the field, you want them to do things that they're uncomfortable doing. Yeah, I, I agree with making them uncomfortable, but I totally I disagree with you 100% on, you know, if you win the toss, take the ball. I'm big proponent on deferring. And the reason I say defer is because I always, th- I always like to steal an extra possession in that 
late in that second quarter. So you possibly get the ball back in some fashion, score, and then you get the ball again at the end at the start of the second half. That's still in a possession there. And I think if you defer, there's nothing wrong with that. You can assert your dominance defensively. You have a quick three and out. The crowd's still going to go crazy. It's going to go nuts. Um, what has to happen is the Spartans on the field have to get the crowd into the game early, and that's what's going to carry that momentum. Minnesota, the reason I don't like deferring against a team that's on a roll like Minnesota is right now is because they come in with a scripted first 15 plays, and it doesn't matter what the defense gives you. This is what you're running. It's very well-oiled and fast-paced. The calls come in very easy, and when you don't have any score, you know, they, they continue to do that. When there is a quick score and there's some scrambling going on and then maybe, you know, there's, oh, wait, wait a minute, we're down by a touchdown. We're down by 10 points. They deviate from that script. And now it becomes, hey, you got to be a great play caller. And I think that Michigan State holds the cards at a, as a home opponent against Minnesota's offense coordinator with P.J. Flett coming in town, wanting to do what they do, but they are not a type of team that's going to get vertical and throw it on you all day long. That's not what they want to do. But I do agree with kind of steal some possessions late in that ball game because it is no doubt going to be a smash mouth, close Big Ten matchup, J.U. Yeah, it definitely is. And, uh, you know, you can still, you know, if we get the ball first, we score, they're still going to stick to their script. It's still early in the game, you know. I think the big thing is the crowd in Spartan Stadium. That's going to be the deciding factor there. If these guys are put in an uncomfortable position, like uh, Coach Talker's always saying, dragging them to the deep end, we have to do that early. And the crowd plays a big big role in that the woodshed has to be packed the student sections have to show out come out and uh the other fans you you should not be sitting down on any third down you should be up getting the team into it and that right there will derail the players it doesn't matter what's called you know what the offensive coordinator calls if the players on the field feel that energy that's going to play a fact yeah, you know, when you look at what Michigan State was able to do from a penalty standpoint going into the Washington game, one of the lowest penalized teams in the nation. I think giving up 70 yards in penalties on the road in Washington it showed and moved the chains a bit for the Spartans and, and also sustained some drives for Washington, a very questionable rough in the passer call early on against Ben Summer, Van Summer and and Minnesota comes in very low in the penalty department. A week ago, four penalties for just 25 yards. Yeah, um, you know, those penalties that you spoke about in Washington, some of them were very questionable penalties, you know, like you just stated. But, uh, yeah, these, these are two disciplined teams that are going to be playing each other. Um, so it's going to come down to whoever blinks first. You don't want to be the one to blink first because that's when that mishap's going to happen. And it's going to come down to... Um, you know, like I said, the special teams. Uh, these are very two disciplined teams, and you, we'll, we're going to see that on Saturday. We definitely are going to see that. It's going to be an exciting game in the woodshed. Going to be some ticket giveaways, Ju. I imagine that this is Sparta is going to put out some information here soon, and you're going to get to meet with Ju over in Tucktown to pick up some free tickets if you enter to win, right? Oh, definitely. There will be ticket giveaways. Uh, come to Tucktown, check it out. Uh, there's DJs, um, games for the kids, yard games, uh, cornhole, uh, Folin, lots of uh, food trucks, great food. You can even uh, go and look, check out the broadcast for WJR, the pregame broadcast. Uh we have a whole concert stage up there. I've seen a couple. Yeah, of lots of you can take a picture in front of the big Spartan sign. Uh, you know, so it, it's a it's a really cool, unique atmosphere that um, you know that a lot of families will really enjoy. Well, very kid friendly over there. If you you know want to get away from all the debauchery that can happen <laughs> in some of those places out there with the adult beverages, <laughs> when the kids want to throw the ball around and have a good time. That's the place to do it. Tuck Town, presented by Meyer. J.U. Culkert from This Is Sparta and the Spartan Media Network will be there 
doing ticket giveaways for lucky winners who enter to win. Pay attention to our social media this week on Twitter at This Is Sparta MSU and as well as the Instagram This Is Sparta MSU. Uh, but Ju, any final comments before we wrap this edition of the preview for the Minnesota? Big Ten opener in the woodshed? Yeah, I'm just looking for the Spartans to bounce back and bounce back in a good way. And I think we'll see that. Uh, come out to the game, cheer loud, and yell, go green. That's right. Go white. And it's that is perfect. We need to get the Spartan nation out in full force to cheer on the Michigan State football team against the Golden Gophers of Minnesota in the Big Ten opener in the woodshed. At three, well, let's say get there early. Get there about one p.m. Let's start cheering loud. It's going to be a later kickoff in the evening. But Michigan State, obviously now another underdog at home, as far as the Vegas odds are. If concerned. you're into that kind of thing, if you're into that kind of thing, that listen, there's a lot of people into that kind of thing with all these, you know, <laughs> these apps or whatnot they get into nowadays. But look, I think it's another way for Michigan State to put a chip on their shoulder and come out and perform better than they did a week ago on the road. They get to be in a comfortable place at home in the woodshed and Michigan State should win this ball game if things go as we know that they can as far as the talent perspective and I know how hard they're going to be being coached all week long this week. So this is going to put a bow on another episode of This is Sparta. I'm your host, Jason Strayon, and for J.U. Culcrick, we'll see you next time. Have a good night, God bless, and go Go white.